Welcome to the Thick and Mystic Moment, the show that's all about uncovering the secrets of personal transformation and celebrating the incredible stories of those who've dared to change their lives. I'm your guide, Robert John Hadfield, and together we'll explore the power of change. Let's get started. In 1991, the band Kiss put out a song called God Gave Rock and Roll to You. Now, I, for a long, long time, had no idea that this that they actually didn't write this song. They recorded it for a, a movie, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, which was, the I think, the follow-up for their excellent adventure. <clears throat> now, and it, it gave Kiss a little bit of a shot in the arm at one of these moments when they were just... They've had several of those in their career. <laughs> they were kind of on the way out, and then somehow they just managed to to stick around. And but for Kiss fans like me, this was a pretty significant uh, thing when they put this out because it marked the end of the career of Eric Carr. Eric Carr was the the drummer that replaced the original drummer in Kiss named Peter Chris. And Eric Carr was actually really a fantastic drummer, and he <clears throat> just had this very endearing personality, and people just loved him. I mean, in the years <clears throat> of, of KISS history, he might be the most beloved member of that band, and he wasn't even an original member. And, and, and the reason this is so important in the annals of that, of, of that band and their history was that this was the last time he would appear on a Kiss song, even though he didn't play drums on it. He sang a little bit of background vocals in it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he appeared in the video. The reason he didn't play drums was because he was he had heart cancer and he was too ill at the time. And although there was a lot of, hey, you're going to make it, we're going to push through this thing, it just wasn't to be. And Eric Carr died in 1991 from heart cancer. He was just a young guy. I mean, it was just a tragedy for that to happen. And and anyway, when you look back on the history of Kiss, again, that song, God Gave Rock and Roll to You, and that video, this was the last time that that Eric was was part of that you know, that, that truly kind of legendary band. Well, again, that song, I didn't realize that they didn't write it. That song actually was a band from a band called Argent. And they'd put that song out back in, I don't know, 71, 72, somewhere in that neighborhood. And Argent was formed by a guy named Rod Argent, who'd been a part of another band. The, the way these things are tied together is so interesting. But if you've never heard the song God Gave Rock and Roll to You, this was one of Argent's kind of semi-hits. God gave rock and roll to you, gave rock and roll to you. Anyway, that's how it goes. And they had another, they had another uh, kind of, another hit that was probably much bigger, this band. It was called Hold Your Head Up. Hold your head up high, hold your head up high, hold your head high. Anyway, that was Argent. And they, they did they did okay. This was in the early '70s, but but the only re- reason Argent existed was because another band had existed years earlier that that Argent or that Rod Argent had formed, and it's a band that that you you'd probably be familiar with. And it's like I said, it's so fascinating when you when you look back at these things and the stories of how all this stuff tied together. <clears throat> but back, you, you probably realize you've heard of the the British invasion that took place. <clears throat> excuse me, during the 1960s, and it was really headed off, led by the Beatles. You know, when the Beatles hit America, I think in '64, they appeared on Ed Sullivan, and then all of a sudden, the United States was just overwhelmed by these British bands that were that were basically bringing back to the United States what the United States had exported. So the the United States had had generated blues and jazz and and 
it, it, country music and and these these kind of different sounds that then ended up in Britain repackaged and then brought back to us by groups like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and the Animals and so there were a lot of these bands that came from Britain during that British invasion and then just became these these really really successful groups uh, here in the United States, and this was all part of the, the British invasion. Well, there was one band that was part of that, but they were just a little bit different. And this was this band that I'm talking about that this guy, Rod Argent, had originally been a part of. And it was a band called The Zombies. Now, whether you think you've heard of them or not, you've definitely heard at least one, if not a couple of their tunes. And it's such a weird story how this whole thing happened and, and, and why they formed and where they, and, and how they hit. And anyway, it's, it's, I just wanted to share a couple of these things with you and with this really weird twist at the end. So what had happened was, was back in 61, before the British invasion was even happening, there were these two young guys. One of them was Rod Argent, and another guy was was named Colin Blundstone. And what had happened is, if this story is so so odd, this they they both one night happened to be on the same street. They'd both been trying to get into some pubs on, and but they were both too young, and 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 so Colin Blundstone is literally kind of just out on the street with nothing to do. And he just starts singing some Ricky Nelson tune. <clears throat> so, and, and Rod Argent, who'd also been trying to get into a pub, heard him singing this Ricky Nelson song and walked over to him and said, hey, you're a pretty good singer. You know, I play keyboards. Uh, we could be a band. <laughs> and then the next thing you know, they're putting a band together. And and they they get these other people, they they form something that's called they originally call themselves the Mustangs, and they find out that there's another some other people using the name the Mustangs, and so one of the guys in the band, and this is hard to imagine, but suggested the name the Zombies, and the thing that's hard to imagine is that at the time, that wasn't a word that was very common and 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 all they could think of is what's what's a zombie isn't that the thing like the in Haiti or something the, the, the like, kind of like what and, and anyway they because that's really the only place kind of the the witchcraft out of the islands that <laughs> that people even knew of what this was and and so where it's, where it's hard for us to imagine right now because Zombies are so part of of our culture. You know, we we had that one of the biggest shows that happened over the last couple of decades was The Walking Dead, which was zombies. And you have so many different zombie movies. I mean, they even took uh, the 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 book I Am Legend, which is not about zombies; it's about vampires, and it's a it, very very interesting book. The, it, it, but the movie was about zombies. They, they actually kind of ruined the book, but I think because zombies were such a big thing, they just said, we're going to take, we're going to take that book and we're just going to make it about zombies. But anyway, zombies are such a big thing. Back then, anyway, the point was, back then, zombies were kind of an unknown. Not a lot of people knew what, what it was. And so anyway, they liked the sound of it. It was really original. And so they called their band the zombies. And they... They played for a couple years, got fairly well known, and then in 1964, this is around the time the Beatles are hitting in the United States, they entered into a, it was a, a, a beat group competition, which would kind of be similar to like a battle of the bands. And they happened to win this thing, and they won 250 British pounds, which would be somewhere in the neighborhood of I don't know 6500 British pounds today which would be roughly I'm I'm going to get close but it'd be about 8000 bucks that they won for this in today's dollars 
in this co- in this competition. Well, then what that did is that got them a, a record company interested in them, and they put out a a single, which is also something unusual because that was a lost art, I guess, until kind of recently where we're back to bands now releasing songs again. Because early on, before, a lot of times, bands would put out just a single. They, If you remember, they were the little seven-inch records, and it would just be a song before they would put out a record. And that's what these guys did. They, re- they recorded this tune that would later appear on an album, but they released a single, and it was a song called She's Not There. And this is the one... You almost for sure would have heard this song. Uh, well, no one told me about her, the way she lied. And no one told me about her, the la la la. And it's too late to say I'm sorry. What did I know? Why should I care? La 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 la. She's not there. Well, let me tell you about the way she looked, the way she acted, and the color of her hair. Anyway, that's, that was the song. And that was the song that put him on the map. And so... So, and what's so interesting, even though their song didn't have that same blues thing that groups like the Stones and the Animals did, that first song, the first line, well, no one told me about her, was actually taken from a John Lee Hooker song, which was one of the most famous blues people. And so anyway, that connection to the the American blues and then them repackaging it and sending it back to the United States, the zombies were part of this, these people that were basically taking these sounds and and bringing them back and they they had another kind of semi hit uh tell no 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 anyway that's another that was another zombies zombie song and they they these songs ended up or at least one of them she's not there ended up on their first album which was which was an album that was put out in 1965 and it was called Begin Here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they ended up going to the United States. This would have been in 65 and touring on the success of basically those two songs, but really she's not there. That was the one that really really put them on the map. And I think it ended up it was in the charts somewhere. I mean, it did that well. They toured around the states and did okay for themselves, but they didn't have, even though they had that one hit, they didn't have enough to really, for the kind of staying power that they needed. And so they put out this album called Begin Here that had that song on it. So again, this is so interesting because they'd put the single out and the album didn't come out until later with the song on it. So the song was already known very pretty well before the album came out. So by 1965, they put the album out. The song was already had already already been a hit. And the album just didn't do that great. So they started at this point just floundering a little bit. The band really wasn't going anywhere. So a, a year goes by a couple of years go by, and they finally release what would be their follow-up album. And it was called Odyssey and Oracle. Now, there's an interesting thing about the title, because it was one of the guys in the band had his roommate or something was doing the artwork for it, and they were just going to call the album Odyssey and Oracle. Well, as he's creating the artwork for the album, he doesn't know how to spell Odyssey, and he spells it O D E S S E Y, which is wrong. <laughs> and and it really, although there's all these legends of of why they wrote it that way, and all this, the truth is they just the guy just misspelled it. But that became part of the legend of this group. Well, so anyway, so they <clears throat> they put this album out, Odyssey and Oracle, in 1967, and it just basically doesn't go anywhere it flops doesn't really sell in britain Uh, somebody convinced the record company to release it in the united states i think it was al cooper and they released it in the united states and it just went nowhere 
so the band pretty frustrated at this point they had the one big hit and then nothing and nothing and nothing and then they put out the big follow-up album kind of as a last ditch effort hoping something would come out of it and it just didn't so in 1967 after releasing that album and and kind of unfortunately kind of in a whimper they just ended and in december of 1967 they played their last show so 67 ends 1968 comes and goes 1969 comes in and then almost out of nowhere one of the songs that was on the odyssey and oracle album takes off and it's a song called time of the season it in the, it's a time of the season bum bum it's a time of the season of loving anyway every part of that song is catchy the the verse the pre-chorus, the chorus, I mean, it's just such an interesting song. And again, they'd been broken up for almost two years. I mean, they broke up in 67, and here we are in 69. And out of nowhere, that song takes off. And it becomes this pretty huge hit. And and it's so much so that there's a good chance if you're watching or listening to this right now, you've heard that song, even my poor rendition of it right there. And there was some talk at that point of the band getting back together, uh, recording another, some more songs, and, and there was plans, and they talked about it, and then they just didn't. At this point, Rod Argent had already moved on. He was already putting another, he'd already put Argent together. And they were, it was just, it wasn't before too long, you know, eventually they were going to put their first album out, which then led to the songs I started out with, God Gave Rock and Roll to You, and, and Hold Your Head Up High. They were just, they were coming. And so the, they just didn't, they just thought we're just going to let it go. And, and they, they kind of, they didn't, they didn't really want to get back together because it felt a little bit like they were just going to wane. It, and, and they already had other things going on, so they just let it go. Now, what's really interesting that happened after this, even though CBS tried to get them to put another album out, and they just declined and decided not to, Another organization called Delta Promotions somehow managed to get the rights to do this. They created two different versions of the zombies, totally fake versions of these bands. One of them was up in Michigan and one of them was down in Texas, literally touring, calling themselves the zombies, playing the zombies music. In 2012, Odyssey and Oracle was ranked by Rolling Stone magazine as 100 in the top 500 albums of all time. It's gone down now as one of the great, one of the greatest albums ever. And yet it was put out in a total whimper. And people look back on it now today and go, that was absolutely incredible what those guys put out and of course the song that i kind of sang a second ago you've almost certainly heard before it came off that album and then in 2019 they were put in they were inducted into the rock and roll hall of fame these guys that just barely at the time in their own time barely made a splash now here's the twist Because this really, even though this is a discussion about the zombies and their kind of interesting rise to fame and their rise and fall and 
and picking up the pieces and, and eventually Argent forms and makes this pretty significant, you know, a couple pretty significant hits that are still lingering around today. One of these fake zombie bands, the one that was formed in Texas, had a guy in the band named Dusty Hill and another guy named Frank Beard. They were, they'd been put together by this Delta Promotions to be one of these fake zombie bands. Well, if you don't recognize either of those names, Dusty Hill and Frank Beard, not long after this, would join up with a guy named Billy Gibbons and form a band called ZZ Top. And ZZ Top would go on to be one of the most successful and legendary rock groups of the 1970s and the 1980s, and even to this day, could fill up large places. One of the most successful bands of that era literally came (laughs) from a fake band uh, that was touring under the name The Zombies. Now, it's one, there's so many little interesting principles to learn from all this stuff. You, know, you go back to the zombies themselves, and one of them is you, you can be too early. You know, you look at the song Time of the Season, and it, it probably, and, and some of the stuff they're doing probably was a little bit, of, as we call it, ahead of their time. And they were just too early. But one of the things that's so important, and I don't know that it would have made a difference for them, but it's it's this idea of perseverance. I was listening to Tim Pool talking about this yesterday. He he's a one of the most successful YouTubers in the world. He was talking about being successful in, on YouTube, and he said, "Look, the formula for being successful on YouTube it's pretty simple. It's perseverance. You just have to stick with it." And my brother-in-law shared a statistic with me a couple days ago that kind of shocked me. And he says, if you, on average, if you're going to try to get a million followers on YouTube, on average, you need to put out over 3,000 videos to get there. And what is that? And you, if you put out one video a day, what is that, like nine years? So this whole idea of just persevering and when you look back at the story of the zombies, they that short little window that they that that really took place there, perhaps if they would have just, hey, we put this album out, let's keep going. Maybe if they'd have still been together when that song finally hit, or maybe it would have hit earlier. And who knows? You know, I mean, really, this is just conjecture and it, it, years and years later rearview mirror hindsight but it is an interesting thought Th- this whole idea of just hold on stick to it if you have the skills and you have the talent and you love what you're doing just hold on persevere and and so often that is the key to success but the other thing is zz top this legendary group that you've heard songs of theirs before, uh, from LaGrange to Tush to, I mean, all the stuff that came off of Give Me All Your Love and All Your Hugs and Kisses Too. I mean, th- just hit after hit after hit. And the idea that, that a couple of these guys, they were able to, to help, help launch their career from the kind of the energy of something else. So many groups, so many bands start out their career playing other people's music. The Rolling Stones, what you may not realize, even though they ended up being such fantastic songwriters, that, that really wasn't what they set out to do. They were a cover band. They were just playing like a lot of these groups and the Beatles too. They were playing all this music they loved from the from a, the United States, and eventually somebody told 
Keith and Mick, you guys need to write some music. You can't just keep playing other people's songs. And then they attempted doing it, and they ended up just being awesome at it. The Beatles figured it out before the Stones did, but, but they ended up being incredible songwriters. But they, they gathered momentum using other people's music. And, and a lot of artists don't like doing that because somehow they feel like they're selling out or they're not, they're not being themselves. And, being, and, and I, I think that seems a little bit foolish to me. Uh, when there's nothing wrong, I think, with, with, with taking something that somebody else has done and maybe even improving on it. And it's funny because now I take this all the way back to the beginning of the discussion where that song, God Gave, Gave Rock and Roll to You, what was that? That was Kiss picking up on an old song and using it to gather a little bit of energy to move forward. And you don't have to be a musician to utilize this principle because so many people are successful in life not by creating something out of nothing, but by taking something that somebody else has already created and then improving on it finding a new way, a new twist, a new idea on an old thing, taking something that already exists and adding your twist to it, building on it, improving it. And if you look around at so many things that we call innovation, that's really what it is. It's something that somebody already created and designed and you simply come in and say, I think I can take that thing and make it a little bit better. Thank you for joining us on another Thick and Mystic Moment. We hope today's episode has sparked your curiosity and ignited the flames of change within you. Remember, you're not alone on this journey. Stay connected with the Thick and Mystic Moment on all major social media platforms. Please come and share your thoughts with us and share the podcast with your friends and anyone else seeking transformation in their life. This is Robert John Hadfield signing off. And remember, do something different today.